Wow, what a mess this has all turned into. Uh, earlier this week, Nintendo officially released the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, which was already getting met with a lot of negative reception with their pricing point, forcefully bundling in the Animal Crossing DLC. Uh, the YouTube video they have, just showing it off, has a very large dislike ratio. Uh, and the official launch of the service hasn't really done it any favors. There are already a lot of videos out there that are doing a great job exploring the sort of deep dive of what exactly is wrong with the emulation on this service. The kind of Cliff Notes version I want to go over real quick, though, is that in general, the emulation, at least for N64, is not great. Sega Genesis is working fine. Uh, like with all NSO stuff, the multiplayer functionality is still a little give and take. Uh, but as far as just playing games single player, the N64 emulation needs some work. Some of the main things that have really stood out to a lot of people are noticeable increases in input lag, especially on Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time. In fact, Super Mario 64 on Nintendo Switch Online has worse input delay than Super Mario 64 running on the 3D All-Stars collection. The same game running on the same platform, running worse. One thing I do want to emphasize about this input lag though, because I feel like there is a little bit of hyperbole that's going on with discussing it, it's not unplayable. Uh, I think there are gonna be some people out there who pick up the service, start playing games, and don't really notice it. Uh, but if you've played these games extensively recently, or if you just are really into paying attention to things like input latency, yeah, there is a noticeable pretty bad lag. It's not to the point that the game is going to be completely unplayable, but it is to the point where a lot of times things that require very precise timing aren't gonna really work out the way you want them to. Anytime you have to rely on precise timing, you're gonna find yourself to maybe be a little more off than you think you're supposed to be, and that's because there is input latency happening between when you press the button and when it happens in game. The reason why I wanna emphasize this is because I think some people are taking that argument right away of being like, oh, this is just a hot garbage mess and you can't play this at all. And there are other people who don't necessarily pay attention to these things as much and are just going, what are you talking about? I'm playing it just fine. And so I think it's really important just to clarify to people what actually the difference is, why it matters, how it is a bit of a problem, and just the fact that we know Nintendo can do better. Uh, not only even looking at past examples of emulation, like how these things ran on the Wii U, but even with the example of Super Mario 64 running on both NSO and 3D All-Stars and not giving you the same level of quality. Along with the input latency, there are also just some odd emulation errors. Some things are just not looking the way they're supposed to in-game. One of the most notable things a lot of people brought attention to is that in Ocarina of Time, fog doesn't display correctly. So in certain scenes where fog is meant to maybe kind of add a little bit more of a mood setting or hide certain things that don't look quite right, uh, now those scenes just look noticeably uglier. And then something that I think does stand out to a lot more people right away and is one of the really annoying things because it seems like it would have one of the easier fixes, button mapping. Part of this has to do with how the N64 controller is being translated over to the Switch controller. A lot of games would oftentimes rely on having you hold the middle and right side of the controller, not using the left side of the controller. And so for games that would make use of the R and Z buttons, it translates a little bit weird on the Switch. I think one of the best ways to really exemplify this is Star Fox 64, specifically the barrel roll. Uh, with barrel roll, normally you are using one of the shoulders to do a right spin, and then on the N64, you would use the Z button to do a left spin. The way that this ends up translating to the Switch controller is R is used for tilting to the right, and then ZL is used for tilting to the left, which doesn't really make as much sense. There's also the fact that where the A and B buttons sit relative to each other and relative to C buttons is not the same way that it is on the N64 controller. And so a lot of it just doesn't really translate the right way and make sense the way it would on the original platform. Now, of course, you do have the ability to remap button inputs on the Switch, except in this case, it's only letting you do it at a system level. There is no way to remap the buttons in app. That means that in order to make some games make better sense of the controller, you need to remap your entire Switch controls and then remap them back when you wanna go play something else. Which is, you know, frustrating. Now the thing about this is, I think there's a lot of people out there who don't necessarily pay attention to these kind of specifics, are gonna pick up the service as part of just wanting to have a little nostalgia for some of their favorite games growing up, and not necessarily notice these things. And what I really wanna talk about is why this matters and why you should maybe think about holding off on this service. Nintendo as a company has been kind of frustrating over the last couple of years. There's, there's been this little bit of headbutton give and take where there is some stuff they're doing that I am a big fan of and really happy about and other stuff that's just 
not so much. I think as far as moving forward and what they've been doing with a lot of their first party properties, there's been a lot of cool stuff being made. We finally got a new Metroid title that was excellent. Breath of the Wild was obviously great. We're getting a new Breath of the Wild, hopefully next year, which I am really excited about. Super Mario Odyssey was fantastic. There's a lot of great stuff going on in terms of just new first party content support. But when it comes to their back catalog, it's just been a really weird situation. We've talked about this a little bit with them dropping Virtual Console in exchange for Nintendo Switch Online. And again, I don't necessarily dislike the concept of Nintendo Switch Online. I think the idea of offering a yearly subscription service that gives you access to these games as part of it is a fun thing. What I'm not a fan of is it being the only way to access this content on modern systems. And originally with the $20 a year for NES and SNES games along with the online multiplayer support, which is its own, problem because it doesn't really run as well as you'd want a pay for service to do. I thought the NES and SNES games were fine. Yes, there's been that drip feed of later games that we're not necessarily getting as many big name titles that some people were really hoping to see added. We're still waiting on Earthbound for SNES, but the opening library and a lot of stuff that was added right away felt like a solid service, even if it didn't appeal to everyone. But this expansion pack really changes that situation because now we're looking at something that's being pitched as a premium version of the service that is charging over twice as much as the original version of it. And it's adding one collection of games that runs well, but also happens to have a lot in common with a pre-existing standalone game you can just buy that is called the Sega Genesis Collection. And then another collection of games that aren't really running as well as they could. Now, one of the kind of silver lining optimistic things I've seen about this service is ways that Nintendo might increase its value with time. The way they're branding this right now is that the Animal Crossing DLC is going to be looped in as part of the service, which you can buy on its own for $25. And so the hope there, right, is that other standalone DLCs that you could buy individually for money might just get rolled in as part of the service. Uh, if Breath of the Wild 2 has an expansion pack or a season pass, that could get rolled in to Nintendo Switch Online. If they ended up doing any kind of additional DLC for other major upcoming games like Splatoon. And they absolutely do see a future where that kind of thing could happen and could increase the value of this service. One of the things that's really confusing me about the potentiality is that if that was Nintendo's plan, I don't understand why they wouldn't just talk about it right now. I understand not detailing what other DLC could be included as part of the service, but even just having the sort of offhand vague remark of, hey, Nintendo Switch Online, you're getting N64 games, Sega Genesis games, you're getting Animal Crossing DLC, and future DLC to be announced will be included as well. It's a very easy thing to kind of roll in, and I'm not sure why, if that was the plan, why that just hasn't been done right now. Because as it stands, one of the other really frustrating things about this situation is that the expansion pack is only available as a yearly membership service, which is asking for more out of you upfront. Because if you weren't sure about the emulation or not sure about what DLC you would care about, if there was a monthly option, yeah, you could just do the monthly option and then cancel after. But with a yearly one, there's that higher upfront ask that I think is scaring more people. Now, the kind of flip side of this is that by being a yearly membership, those people that do take the dive and end up being unhappy with it are now stuck for the full year. Which brings me back to the main point I kind of want to make about this. I honestly think that a lot of people should try to hold off on this. Look. At the end of the day, if you don't care about the nitty gritty about how performance can be done for these games and you just really want a convenient way to replay Ocarina of Time or Star Fox 64 on the go on your Switch, great, go ahead, you do you. But with how things are looking right now, I really think it's important to start trying to really drive home a message of this isn't cool. Because at the end of the day, Nintendo is a business. No matter what kind of complaints people might have, it's not gonna really matter to them unless it ends up getting reflected in the actual sales. And because this is currently a yearly only option, there are gonna be a lot of people who dove in right away to check it out at launch and are now locked in and gave Nintendo the sales they wanted to see. But that doesn't necessarily mean that future sales couldn't be disrupted or slower than the projections they had set in mind. The reason this is so important to me and why I think it should matter to a lot more of you out there is because Nintendo arguably has the richest history of classic games that deserve preservation 
and they just aren't really doing the best job of it. I mean, when you compare it against what some of the other companies out there are doing, right? Xbox, who has the shortest history to preserve, has actually put in some of the best effort by making a lot of games playable on modern day systems. While it's not the entire library, there are a lot of classic Xbox games that you can even pop the disc into the system and download the digital version of the game to play, which is amazing. PlayStation, while I think they do have more work to do on that front and have really been slipping on it lately, a lot of their most big hallmark earlier titles from the PS1 and PS2 days were really third party titles and a lot of those companies have been putting some good effort into making their stuff available. Square Enix has been on fire lately with bringing back a lot of classic games, not only big ones like Final Fantasy, but even tapping into some of their lesser known or not as big hit series, like with the Mana series or the Saga series. Konami even, who more or less for right now has basically ducked out of major AAA production, has at least been putting out collections of some of their major titles, like we got recently with the Castlevania Advance collection. Nintendo, meanwhile, has been really emphasizing, and this is something I talked about in another video, I think it was the one when the Game Boy rumors were coming to Nintendo Switch Online, is that they treat a lot of their back catalog the same way that I feel like Disney treats a lot of their classics with the Disney Vault, right? Uh, it's not something that's just being made easily accessible for everyone who is on the platform. Instead, it is being handled in this sort of drip feed style way where you invalidate the older way you were making it available and then come up with a new way to give access to this new content. I mean, the 3DS, Wii and Wii U gave us the virtual console to play these games that we bought individually and then dropped support with the Switch in favor of Nintendo Switch Online, along with some other quick one-shot ideas they had with like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo Classic Edition systems, and more recently with the little game and watch physical things, which again, all of this stuff I'm not necessarily against in its own form. I think it's cool to have physical collectibles that give you ways of playing these games, but when it becomes the only method, that's worrying. And the thing that's really frustrating about all this is that this is entirely within Nintendo's power. And yeah, certain forms of emulation and getting certain things to work can be more effort, but when you can even see on its own platform where there are games running better than they are on this paid for service tier, that's just not a great sign. And the thing is, right, the hardcore enthusiasts are gonna take care of themselves. Uh, whether it's through people embracing emulation or owning physical copies of these older games and finding ways to play them on modern setups with improved performance. These things are out there. But the thing is that really only services the people who, yeah, put the stock and effort into this and already have the nostalgia for these older games. With how much the Nintendo Switch has helped bring Nintendo back into a lot of people's homes and increased awareness of the brand again, there is so much potential here to reintroduce new people into older games that are worth still experiencing and discovering and seeing the roots of that they just can't because it's not being handled right. Those are just a bunch of thoughts I wanted to get out about this whole Nintendo Switch Online expansion situation. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you have already upgraded, what has your experience been like? Do you think some people are overreacting or do you agree that this has definitely been an issue? Uh, if you did end up changing your mind because of this video, hey, let me know that down below in the comments as well. I hope to see a better version of this down the line that we can all celebrate and enjoy. But for now, maybe save that money.